Hello and welcome to UCL Global Health. HIV and sexually transmitted infections are still widespread and at epidemic proportions in many poor countries. I'm joined by Jolene Scordis, an economist from UCL. Jolene, you're working with the DIFA project, which stands for Diagonal Interventions to Fast Forward Enhanced Reproductive Health. Where are you working and what's happening? This is an EU-funded project in four low- and middle-income countries, Kenya, Mozambique, South Africa and India. And it's rather interesting because it takes a diagonal health systems approach. Now, diagonal is something that's been in the theory for a little while, but the aim with diagonal health systems approaches is that you strengthen current health systems delivery, so you're not undermining current systems, but what you do is you establish what is needed on top of that uh, and in addition to that, to improve access, and in this case, amongst vulnerable groups who might not otherwise have access to sexual and reproductive health services. So it's a mixture of horizontal and vertical. That's it. So horizontal, what do you mean by horizontal? So horizontal means working within the current system to strengthen what is already there. Health centres, hospitals, Health centres, workforce, drug supply. We've begun the project with a detailed audit of what exists, yeah. what's strong, what's weak, what can we do to support what's weak and maximise what's strong. What kind of weaknesses are you finding? Well, we're, st we're still waiting for the data to come in, mm. but in some of the places, the um, it's workforce shortages, yeah. it's a lack of trained staff, a lack of feet on the ground. Mm. In other places, it's drug supply, and in others, it's less a problem of health system supply during working hours, but the fact that some vulnerable groups simply can't get there on a Thursday between 9 and 12 right. without having to give up paid work, which they can ill afford to do. So what's the vertical component? So the vertical component is because we are working within sexual reproductive health, we've got this horizontal angle, but we are focusing on vulnerable groups. Now, we could have in an earlier age, set up a separate service targeted just at these vulnerable groups, mm. predominantly people working in the sex industry, sexual health uh, sex workers, not sexual health workers. Um, what we're trying to do now, though, is make sure that they don't end up a marginalised, stigmatised group with mm. separate services targeted at them, but rather to ensure that mainstream services allow them to be drawn in and serviced in the same way as the entire population so that we don't have first and second tier citizens, first and second tier health services. We incre increase the quality of all sexual and reproductive care and ensure that these key vulnerable groups can have access to that care. What's the public health value of particularly focusing on vulnerable groups? Well, there's been an interesting amount of work done identifying these sex workers as the nexus for transmission of HIV particularly, but also other STIs. And the assumption here is that if you target services at these groups and you significantly reduce infection rates in this much smaller group, mm you can have a wider effect on the population as a whole without having to undergo a, uh, a full population level program with all the costs. Because the they're major transmitters of infection, because potentially. They, they are the nexus of much transi okay. transmission that goes on. Not all. We don't want to reinforce stigma here as far as these groups are concerned. Sure. Um, but they are the link group between the infection and the main population. So the idea is if you target the link and you reduce infection rates amongst this link population, that you will reduce the pathways through which the infections can get into the population as a whole. Okay, and what will success look like in three years' time? I would say success in three years' time would look like significantly lower rates of HIV and STIs amongst sex workers in these four countries. Success will look like higher rates of access at earlier stages of infection amongst those who do still become infected. And beyond three years, it will look, at, it will look like lower prevalence rates in the population as a whole. Then we prove that hypothesis that by really servicing these link groups well, we can benefit an entire population. And Jolene, you're an economist. What added value do you think economics brings to these kinds of projects? 
Well, we have three main aims on this project. The first is what one might stereotype as the classic health economist role. We're looking at the cost of delivery, the cost effectiveness of delivery, so that governments can make decisions about how to spend scarce resources and make decisions about what this would cost to do at scale. Our second is to look at, are we actually targeting vulnerable groups? So are we having an equity impact here? Mm. Are we improving access amongst those who would not otherwise have it? Yeah. And our third is linked to that equity angle to look at whether we are targeting vulnerable, i.e. unempowered groups. So groups who may otherwise have lacked access, not because they are financially poor, but because they lack the capability and empowerment to argue for their own services. If we can achieve those three objectives, I'd say as economists, we've made some positive contribution here. Well, we'll get you back in two years to give us the, the good news. I look forward to it. Jolene, many thanks. Thank you.